Correctly, it says we need to move the first one two feet. What's that? A little to the left. Two feet. You sure? Says right here in the plans. Sure thing, boss. You sure you're reading that right? I mean, it might be upside down. What are those? Blueprints. Hello, everybody. I'm Lawson. And I'm Brandon. And welcome to the So and So Show. Yes. And On today's what show. show Wait, what are, are you? you why are, why are you, you talking, talking over me? me? No, 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 no. We discussed this over our pre-show corn We discuss no such thing. Oh, of course. See, you never listen to me. You hear me. That is but not you true. Don't listen, I do Brandon. listen. Oh, do you? How would you ever know to listen when you're too busy being on your phone the entire time? I was looking at the intro to the show, which apparently you oh. won't let me oh. do. Okay. To was the intro talking. to the show a video of a ferret doing the cog line on loop? It helps me focus. Your team in a funk? Yes. Feel like you aren't able to communicate? Yes. Then today's your lucky day. Hi, I'm Tanya, team motivator and influencer. Sometimes it can feel like your team is all over the place. Here, 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 here. But with my proven team building exercises, I can take your team from here to here before it gets to here. So call Teams by Tanya today. Today. 
So it's just me and Brandon, and we are having trouble being a team. He's having trouble being a team. What do you mean I'm having trouble? There's no me in team, Brandon. Yes, there is. There's an M and an E. There's a me in team. There's no I in team. That's the saying. Gentlemen, it seems we're having trouble communicating. Yes. yes. Brandon, turn towards Lawson. Lawson, turn towards Brandon. Now close your eyes. Without making a sound, I want you to mouth these words. I can't see you, I can't hear you. Good. Keep going, mouthing those words. I can't see you, I can't hear you. Good, even bigger, but still without making any sound. Good, good, yes. Bigger, bigger. Good, I can't see you, I can't hear you. Now stop. Open your eyes. Look at each other. Good. Now close your eyes again. Okay. I want you to slowly open your eyes. Very small. Barely open your eyes. Whisper these words, Brandon, to Lawson. I see you and I hear you. I see you and I hear you. Even quieter. I see you and I hear you. Good. Lawson? I see you and I hear you. Good. Keep repeating that. And each time, I want you to open your eyes a little bit wider and get a little bit louder. I see you and I hear you. I see you and I hear you. Good. Keep building that. I see you and I hear you. 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 Louder! Tell them! I see you, and I hear you. I see you, and I hear you! Yes, louder! I see you, and I hear you! I see you, and I hear you! I, I see, see you, and I hear you! I see you, and I hear you! I see Here is done. Now it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, gents. Kellen. Yes? I see you and I hear you. Okay. Thanks. Back at you. Do you have a Bible story for us today? Absolutely. And here to help me tell it are... The So-and-So Show Players! Oh, yeah. Today's story comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25. There was a man named Nabal. Nabal was known to be rude and mean, and he was married to Abigail, who was wise and clever. But we'll get to her in a minute. Now, Nabal was very wealthy. He had 1,000 goats and 3,000 sheep. And it was time for Nabal to shear his sheep and sell the wool. There's another character in today's story. His name is David. You might remember David as the shepherd boy who slayed a giant and then became king. This is that same David. But in our story, he hasn't become king yet. David was staying with his men in the desert when he heard that Nabal was shearing his sheep. Francis! Oh. Yes, David. I want you to go to Nabal, and I want you to greet him kindly for me. And then I want you to remind him of how well we treated his men when they were with us. And lastly, I want you to ask him, Ask him if there's anything he can share with me and the other men. Go! Yes, yes, sir! 
David's men delivered the message to Nabal, but Nabal's response was, well... So, David would just like you to remember all that he did for you, and then, you know, would appreciate if you could find anything for us. I'm sorry. Who? David who? Son of Jesse who? <laughs> Why should I give up my bread and my meat that I have prepared? Hmm? Why? Uh, because, Why? Uh, the answer is not just no. It is no. Million times no. Be gone with you. Go. No. Go. Million times no. Million times no. Million times no. Million times, no. David's men reported back everything Nabal had said to them. No. No. A million times no. Watch. Watch. Men, put on your swords because we are going to destroy Nabal. David was angry. I don't have my sword. Maybe a little too angry. Now, Nabal was in big trouble unless somebody could stop David. That's where Nabal's wife, Abigail, comes in. Abigail! Yes, Frankie? Nabal just insulted David. David, the guy who's been keeping us safe while we watch our sheep. David's really mad, and I think he's out for revenge, so you, you gotta do something. All right, people. Listen up. We're gonna have to do this fast. I need you to go get 200 loaves of bread, Frankie. Billy? Eh? Grab two bottles of wine, and I'm not talking the small ones, I'm talking the big ones and the animal skins. Sure thing, boss. Sally. Yes, Abigail? I need you to get the five sheep ready to be cooked. You got it. And Frankie! Oh. I'm gonna need a bushel of grain. Okay. And 100 raisin cakes. Okay. And 200 cakes of pressed figs. Let's go, people! There's no time to waste! Abigail wasted no time. After she collected all the food, she loaded it onto the donkeys and met David, who was approaching from the desert. Ah, can you believe it, men? How he has treated us? We have served him, and how did he repay us? He repaid us with evil! And we will destroy Nabal! Pardon me, sir. Yes? I must speak with you. Let me take the blame. Pay no attention to that man, Nabal. Nabal! He's really not worth getting that worked up over. Who? Nabal. No. no. Eyes, right here. His name means... <laughs> <laughs> what? His name means fool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he does many foolish things. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> so you don't need to kill Nabal, do you? Yeah. No. 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 You see, God has prevented you from killing Nabal and his men. And I have brought many gifts for you to have. Ah. Yeah. So you have. It's very kind. So you don't need to kill Nabal. God will take care of it. Mm. He's going to appoint you king over all of Israel, and you don't want to have to worry about how you killed Nabal and didn't have to, right? <sighs> yeah, you make a lot of sense. Thank you. I just ask that when you're king, you remember me. All right. All right, go, go, you may go in peace. I have heard what you have come here to say, and I will do as you have asked. Goodbye! So Abigail returned home, and David stayed put. 
With her quick thinking, Abigail was able to make peace. The end. Great story, Kellen. Thanks. And many thanks to the so-and-so show players. Okay, okay, Th that wasn't terrible. Yeah, Abigail was incredible. Uh, to be able to soften a situation like that took a lot of courage mm -hmm. from Abigail. Yeah, David was so angry he could kill, but God used Abigail. After talking to her, David walked away from a fight and didn't make a huge mistake he probably would have regretted. Making peace isn't easy, is it? Not at all. Sometimes people think the person trying to make peace is weak because it looks like they don't want to fight or argue. But being a peacemaker is incredibly hard, and it usually takes a lot of work. And a lot of raisin cakes. <laughs> oh, you know it. Great story. Thanks, Kellen. Yep, I'll see you guys next time. Later. Wish I could be a peacemaker like mm. Abigail or, or Tanya. But how, Brandon? How? I don't know. But let's find out. Reveal the question. What are ways you can be a peacemaker? Uh, maybe you can be a peacemaker with two of your friends. Or within your family, or maybe a sports team. Or maybe you can be a peacemaker by saying you're sorry. Lawson, I'm, I'm sorry that I get angry at you sometimes. You're a great friend. Thanks, buddy. I'm, I'm sorry, too. I don't think either of us were peacemakers today. Yeah. Until now, high five! Yeah. That was close enough. All right, that was we'll close get, enough. Yeah. There are lots of ways you can be a peacemaker. Talk about it with each other. And we'll see you next time on The, the So and So, so Show. Show. I can't see you. Oh, good. Oh. I can't hear you. I can't see you. What did you say, Brandon? I, I can't see you. Tanya. I, I can't see. Are my hands still over my ears? I can't see you. Why are my eyes closed? I, I can't see, see you. you. I, I can't, can't hear you. you. I can't see you. I need a nap. What? I need water. What? This I is need a nap. Building. I can't see the point. Why? Good work, Tanya. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do that. <laughs>
Now let's head back to Genesis to take a different look at peace. God has blessed Isaac with a good crop and large flocks and herds, but the nearby Philistines feel threatened. They're so fearful, they fill up Isaac's wells with dirt. That leaves Isaac with a tough choice, fling mud back in their faces or refuse to play dirty and walk away. Let's wrap up in the book of 1 Samuel. Here, David and his men have been protecting the flocks of a rich man named Nabal. But when David asks if they can share in the sheep shearing feast, Nabal just sneers. David is ready to flip his lid. He marches out with 400 men to face Nabal. That's when Nabal's wife, Abigail, hears what's going on. She comes up with her own peace offering, and it's pretty sweet. True peace takes hard work and creativity. It takes proving you care more about others than about winning. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and in me.